Hello everyone and welcome back to another Blender Mini T tutorial. Today we're going to be learning how to create a gradient fire animation. We'll be creating a pretty basic simulation and then we'll jump into the material and learn how to create the gradient effect. If you already have a simulation that you want to apply the material to, skip to this part in the video to learn how to do that. For this first part, we're going to go ahead and create the simulation. I'm going to press X and delete the default cube and then press Shift A and we will add in a plane. This is going to be our flow object, and then I'll press S and Y, scale it down a little bit, then S and X and scale it along so we have a long strip of a plane like this. Then go over to Object, down to Quick Effects, and then Quick Smoke. This will automatically add a domain for us with a basic material already in place. From there, we can go over to the Physics Settings, and here are all the options for the fire. Currently, it's using the replay type for the cache, and I don't want this, I want it to be set to modular so we can actually bake it in. Once you switch it over to modular, we can set up the settings. In my animation that you saw at the beginning of the video, I used a resolution of 520. Now that took a very long time to bake, and I don't feel like waiting that long again, so I'm just going to go with 256. From there, we can scroll down and turn on adaptive domain, and this will speed up the bake just a little bit, and then scroll down over to the fire. The reaction speed controls the height of the flames. The lower you set this to, the higher the flames will be. I'm going to set this to a value of 0.55. The flame vorticity determines the amount of swirls and randomness in the flames, and I want a little bit of that, so I'm going to bring this up to a value of 0.8. For the end frame of this animation, I want it to be 100 frames long, so I'm going to set this to 100. Select your flow object, and then go over to the flow type and set this over to fire. Underneath the texture, we're going to enable this and we're going to create a texture to give the flames some more randomness and make it look a little bit more realistic. To do this, jump over to the texture panel and create a new texture. The type we are going to set over to clouds, and this is what our texture looks like. Where the black spots are, there will be no fire, and where the white is, there will be fire. The size of this is currently way too big. We're going to set this to 0.1. If we open up the colors, we can bring the contrast all the way up to a value of 5, and that will look a lot better with the fire. Now if we go back over to the simulation, we can select that texture in the texture panel drop down menu. Another thing that we can do is animate the offset value. Currently it's set to 0, and so the texture will just be in the same exact position through the entire animation. If we animate this, it'll move the texture around and give us a lot more randomness, and this will look a lot more realistic. To do this, make sure you are on frame 1, and then click that little button on the side to add in a keyframe. Then jump all the way to frame 100. We can set this up to a value of 0.7, and then hit that button one more time to add in another keyframe. Doing this animation though, it's not going to look very realistic, because the texture is going to start out slow, speed up in the middle, and slow down at the end, and it will not look very good. To fix this, we can select both of those keyframes by dragging over them, right click and then click on interpolation mode and select linear. You can see the linear is just a straight line and that is what we want. Now our texture will move at a constant rate and it will look a lot better. Now we are ready to bake, so over in the domain settings you can set a cache folder if you want to. I'm not going to worry about that because I don't want to save my cache. I'm going to go ahead and click on a bake data. Our bake has finished and now if we play our simulation we can see this is what it looks like. I can scroll through here and our animation does look pretty good. Now let's set up the rest of the scene and do the material. I'll add in a plane and then scale this up pretty big, and for this material I want it to be a glossy material so we get a nice reflection from the fire. Jumping over to the material tab we can click new and set this over to the glossy shader right here. The roughness is currently too much, we're going to bring this down to a value of 0.2. Select the lamp in your scene and we're going to delete that because we're not going to need it either. And then for the world settings, we're going to drag this all the way down to black. Select your domain and then split the view and switch this over to the shader editor. So click on this menu and select the shader editor right here. Press N to close off that panel and here is our basic principled volume shader. Now normally if we wanted fire, we would turn off the black body intensity. If I drag this all the way to 1 and go into rendered view, we can see the fire in our scene. I don't want to use this though, we're going to be using the emission strength and the emission color. What we need to add is a gradient texture plus a color ramp. So I'm going to press Shift A, go over to Texture, and then Gradient and place that here. Then press Shift A, add in a converter, and then color ramp. Take the color of the gradient, plug that into the factor, 
and then the color into the emission color right here. Now if we press Z and go into render view, we still can't see anything. And I'm also going to switch this over to cycles so we get the reflection of the floor working correctly. If we were to turn up the emission strength, we can see this is what's happening. It's filling the whole domain with the emission. We want to tell Blender where to put the emission. To do this, press Shift A and add in a input and an attribute node. In the name, you're going to have to type in the word flame, no caps, just the word flame. And then if we take the factor, plug that into the emission strength, now we can see we have the gradient working. Now to control the strength of the flame, we can add in a math node. So press Shift A, Converter, Math. We'll place that here. Switch this over to Multiply. Now this bottom value controls the strength of the fire. If I bring this all the way up to a value of 15, we can see here it's a lot brighter. Now if we select this black color and change it over to like a blue or something, we can see the gradient is working. Currently though, it's going sideways. We want it to go up and down. So to fix this, press Shift A, add in a input and then texture coordinate and place that here. Then press Shift A, we will add in a vector and a mapping node. Take the generated, plug that into the mapping and then the vector into the vector of the gradient texture. With the mapping node selected, we can set the rotation of the gradient with these rotation values. If we set the Y all the way to 90, now we can see the gradient is going in the right direction, but it's currently way too strong. To make this a little bit smoother, we can bring the scale of the Z a little bit lower. Let's try a value of 0.3, and then if we take the location and drag this down a little bit, now we have a little bit of a smoother transition. To make this even better, we can go over to the color ramp and switch the type from linear over to ease. And there we can see it's a lot smoother. Now if we select the white color and switch this over to like a purple color, we can get a really cool gradient. Something like that will look pretty good. And as you can see, this is working just fine. It starts out blue and then it turns into a pink purple color as the flame goes up. And you can add as many colors as you want. So if I hit the plus sign, I can switch this over to like a red color. And actually that looks pretty good. I might keep that in. See, as you can see here, it starts out blue right here. It goes over to the pink, which is this middle part, and then it gets red at the top. If I want this pink to show up, I'll just have to drag this over a little bit and bring this gradient closer. And now we have this sort of look. I'm going to leave it as it is, though, because I think that looks pretty good, actually. One more thing that we should probably do with this material is to turn off the smoke. The density is currently set to five. And as you can see, that is causing a lot of noise. If I bring this all the way to zero, there will be no smoke and this will render a little bit faster. If you want smoke, you can leave it in, but since I want this to render faster and I don't want any smoke showing up, set the density all the way to zero. If we were to render this right now, the plane inflow object would show up in the render and there would just be a white strip of a plane right there. We don't want that to show up, so we're going to select it, go over to the outliner and click on this menu and turn on the camera icon. We want to hide this from the viewport and from the render. Make sure those are both off and now this will not show up in the render. Let's go ahead and render one single frame and then jump over to the compositor and add in some glow. Go ahead and exit out of this window and go over to the compositing tab. Click on use nodes and then press N to close off that panel. And now to see what we're doing, we can control shift left click on the render layer to add in a viewer node. You can press V a couple times to zoom out and the only thing that I will add is a denoise node. So I'm going to press shift A, go over to filter, denoise and place that here. And this will get rid of any noise in our scene. And the last thing to do is just set a folder of where you want your animation to go to, select the file format and render it out. So there you go guys, that is how you create a gradient fire animation using Blender. Thank you for watching this tutorial. If you created your own animation, I would love to see it. So make sure to send it to me over on Instagram at Blender Made Easy. But that's going to do it. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you like, comment and subscribe and I will see you in the next one.